Hello everybody, we're going to talk a little Melvin Gordon today, specifically his performance in the Outback Bowl a couple weeks ago against Auburn. Uh, he turned in one of the better performances of the year for him, even by his standards, 251 yards on the ground, 7.4 yards per carry, 3 TDs. All we heard all year was how fast the SEC was and how nobody could run against them, and he made them look slow for the second time this year, the first being against LSU in week one. He was absolutely dominant. So I'm going to take a quick look today about what made him so good against a team that just uh, earlier in the season was fighting for a playoff spot. So let's dive in right now. All right, third quarter, Wisconsin down seven. Gordon gets the carry, and you see that that decisiveness, the speed, the tackle-breaking ability that anybody can really point out within five minutes of watching the guy. But I want to take a deeper look at what exactly Gordon did to make this run work. Uh, Wisconsin, they're in 21 personnel here, which means they've got two running backs, one tight end. Derek Watt, younger brother of J.J. Watt, he's the fullback here with Gordon as the tailback. Now, they've just dialed up a power run here. Uh, contrary to the popular misconception, power runs are not just throwing yourself at the line of scrimmage and literally powering your way forward. It's just a style of blocking in which one or more members of the offensive line pull from one side of the formation to the other to create a numerical advantage when trying to open the intended run lane. So in this case, our pulling blocker is going to be the right guard highlighted in yellow. If you've got four defenders accounting for three blockers on the strong side of the formation, the strong side being the, the side with the tight end, that is, uh, then a power run can essentially add a fourth blocker to that side to help spring the ball carrier loose into the secondary by evening up the numbers four to four instead of four defenders for three blockers. So it's a concept that's been around as old as time. Uh, it still works just as well today as it did in Lombardi era. Now, in order to create space for that pulling guard to slip into this uh, intended run lane, the rest of the offensive line is trying to wash the defensive line the opposite way down the line of scrimmage to seal them out of that newly created lane and give the pulling guard as much space as possible so that he doesn't have to get hung up, hung up in traffic mid-pull. So if he gets lost in traffic because nobody can move bodies off the line of scrimmage, then all of a sudden the ball carrier has no lead blocker and the play dies immediately. That's the worst possible thing that can happen. So washing that line of scrimmage is critical. So we've got the center down blocking on the one technique defensive tackle, the nose tackle some call him, and a 4-3 it's more of a one technique. Now we've got the left guard and the left tackle double teaming the three technique defensive tackle. Uh, that's the Warren Sapp position, the penetrator. The pass rusher, we've got the tight end down blocking on the defensive end to seal that lane, so he's going to be that that further inside seal that the, that the guard is scraping by. So Watt is responsible for kicking out the force corner, that being the slot corner highlighted in yellow, who has force responsibilities. Now, a force responsibility is exactly what it sounds like. Your job is just to force everything back inside and to not lose contain on the edge. You want to feed everything into the linebackers so they don't have to go sideline to sideline chasing after Gordon because that's a battle they're going to lose all day long. He's just too fast. So highlighted in purple is the will or the weak side linebacker who's the backside force. Yellow is the front side force. He's a cornerback, so he's a little bit easier to attack with a fullback as good as Watt because of that size advantage. So here's what we got. Red blockers are trying to wash one way, lead blockers are going to go the other way, and if everybody plays their angles just right and keeps their technique straight, it'll have two opposing walls of people that create a perfect lane right through the secondary for Gordon to skate through. It's a power run concept in a nutshell. It's very basic, but it's very effective. So let's see what happens from Gordon's perspective after the snap. Gordon takes the handoff. He's pressing that outside shoulder of the pulling guard, cuts back upfield. Picks up a nice second level block from the left tackle. Let's roll this back and take a look at it a little bit closer from the beginning. So the line's doing work here. Double team on the three technique, highlighted in red. They're planting their man in the grass. Tight end, highlighted in blue. He's handling his business with the defensive end, washing him down. So far, so good on the play side. As Gordon gets the ball, Watt's zeroing in on his man, the force corner, who wants absolutely no part in taking on this block. Meanwhile, left tackle, he's advancing to the second level. He's going to seal out the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker. They're highlighted in blue. Uh, highlighted in red is the pulling guard. He's going to take on the Sam linebacker, the strong side linebacker in the hole. That's going to kick out and, and create that lane in the first place. So boxed in purple 
is the intended gap for this play. The Badgers want to get Gordon on the edge because he's so fast. So he's going to be pressing that outside shoulder of the guard, hoping that the Auburn linebackers, whether it's the Sam or the Mike or whoever, bite on the inside shoulder of the guard. They want to be either late on their diagnosis or attack the wrong half of the guard so that that naturally puts the guard in between the defender and Gordon when he's trying to get to the edge behind Watt. Now, unfortunately here, the Sam linebacker is making a good play and a smart decision. He's not going to let Gordon get outside, so he's already positioning himself to fill the gap on the outside shoulder of the guard. That naturally forces Gordon to have to cut on the inside shoulder of the guard right into the teeth of the Auburn defense, or at least that's the plan for Auburn. Either way, they don't want to get him to the edge. Gordon's going to have to take the cut back. So rolling it in slow motion, Gordon reads the Sam linebacker fill in the gap, cuts the guard's inside shoulder, dips behind the left tackle second level block. He can't read that play any better than that. Even though the intended gap wasn't open, he adjusted, he cut, he made the most of what he got, and he scored a touchdown. It's the best possible result you can have, and his athletic ability really shone on this play. Oh, this is filthy. Filthy, filthy, filthy. All right, later in the game, fourth and one, gut check time. Let's listen to the call. Say, look, our offensive line is better than your defensive line. We're going to go get it. Let's see if he doesn't try to have him jump here with a hard, hard count. Fourth and one. Play clock at nine. They're going to run the play. It's Gordon. He's got the first down and more. Makes a move. Melvin Gordon inside the 20. Uses the stiff arm. Pylon. Is he in? It's a Wisconsin touchdown. That run basically personifies Melvin Gordon as a talent. Crunch time touchdowns when the team needs the most. Wisconsin's in 22 personnel now, two backs, two tight ends. Auburn's got nine guys in the box. They're doing everything they can to make sure he can't hurt them. It still doesn't work. Again, this is just another power run play. Line washes one way, lead blockers pull the other way. The natural spacing created between the two gives them a seam. So rolling it here. Again, Gordon is just pressing the outside shoulder of the guard, hoping to hit that gap that leads to the edge. Once again, Auburn is filling that gap to try to force him back to the inside linebackers, which they've been trying to do all day. He takes the cutback, immediately has a backer in his face, which is what Auburn hoped to do in the first place. Rolling it back a bit, you can see the left tackle get beat on the second level, which let the linebacker into perfect position to thump him right on the cutback. That's what didn't happen in the first touchdown. It happened on this one. Doesn't matter, though, because Gordon is Gordon. He just jukes the dude out of his shoes, defeats the scheme by himself. So we're rolling that back again because this is just stupid. I mean, it's just stupid that somebody can do this, completely defeat a scheme by themselves. The stiff arm is nasty. It's a grown man's stiff arm. Not a lot of players can do that, believe it or not. I mean, it's just, it's just fun to watch, man. It's just fun to watch. Here's the reason why Auburn fought so hard to keep him from the sidelines, which they didn't really do very well, but they, they tried. Speed. When Gordon gets a snap, Auburn loses contain. They've got nobody who can cut him off before he gets 30 yards. Might not be quite as fast as Tevin Coleman, if you guys are, but Gordon is just as much of a threat on the edge as any other top flight back to come out in the last decade. This was one of my favorite runs of the day, even though it only went for 13 yards. First hole is filled by a defender, reroutes himself twice, puts on a beautiful spin move to get some extra yardage against a loaded box. I mean, take a look at this. Auburn's got 10 guys near the line of scrimmage. 10! They don't even have any safeties playing deep because they know Gordon's getting the ball, and they still can't stop him. Before he even gets the handoff, he's reading the defender fill-in design hole in the play, he sees the cutback lane up the gut, uses some gorgeous footwork to reroute himself twice after the initial cut. Right, let's roll it back. This is just impressive agility right there to go with the spin move, just making defenders grasp at air. This guy's athletic ability is just absolutely insane. I love watching him play because he'll do this kind of stuff every single week. I can't wait to watch him in the NFL. Last but not least, let's take a quick look at Gordon's pass protection skills because that's going to play a big role in how much he sees the field as a rookie. On the whole, he did well. We still have some little quirks to work out here and there. So on this snap, Gordon is tasked with sliding into the hole left by the offensive line. When they slide to the right to double team the three technique, defensive tackle highlighted in blue. Gordon's blocking assignment, should he end up blitzing, is highlighted in red. So on the snap, Gordon immediately slides into his lane, squares up, absorbs contact, no problems, great protection even though the pass was incomplete. Later in the game, again, sliding into his lane smoothly, tracking the blitzer, stones him in the hole, 
perfect. This was Gordon's only bad snap in protection. He just dropped his head too early, trying to gain leverage on the blitzer. Missed his target because he wasn't looking where he was going. It's a very coachable mistake, but definitely one that has to be corrected at the next level because he needs to be relied upon protection. Take another look. He's just dropping his head. Just glanced off Gordon's shoulder. You know, it's, it's a very minor thing, but it should be pointed out. So outside of that one snap of faulty protection, I'd say Gordon played himself a hell of a game. He won on the edge. He won between the tackles. He made huge plays whether the blocking that was there or not. And I know people say that Wisconsin's line always makes it easy for him, but that's not true. Yes, they're a good line, but he made a lot out of nothing. You don't just get 2,500 yards because you got a good offensive line. He made stuff happen whether the blocking was there or not. And that's the sign of a true franchise running back. He's a first-round pick on talent alone. The only question is if the pass-happy modern NFL will agree with that. Leave comments below. Tell me if you think Gordon should be a first-round pick or if you think some other dark horse like Todd Gurley coming off the ACL or Tevin Coleman should be the first running back off the board. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Was lost now.